Hello. Hi. 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 <laughs> Hi. Hello. Hey. So anyway, in this video, I want to focus on awareness. What is awareness, right? Awareness is a practice. Practice is something you do intentionally, like practicing for a sport or a skill that you want to have. The way I understand it now is that practicing awareness is developing the skill of living. All of this is largely informed by my Buddhist education. These geese are fighting. They're like drowning each other, man. One goose is like landing on the other one and then like putting its head underwater. Anyway, skillful living means trying to suffer as little as possible. I want to suffer less and I think most people want to suffer less. And my current approach is if we can be more aware of what causes suffering, there's an opportunity to stop or interfere or change those situations or circumstances that lead to suffering. Some causes of suffering are obvious and others aren't. Let's think of direct interpersonal violence. How do we address harm and feeling hurt when we know that it wasn't intentional, you know, when violence is indirect, how do we address that? Thinking of direct interpersonal violence, what does interpersonal mean? I have a relationship with the most powerful and abusive person in the world, right? I don't directly know them and they don't know me, but I feel the consequences of their actions in a very tangible, visceral way. And also, how do we think about individuality when individualism can be so toxic and alienating? Sometimes violence is clear and obvious, but other times, what's the boundary and how has it been violated? When things aren't obvious, you practice awareness. I find value in academic and intellectual reasoning, but sometimes that's just frustrating and leads to greater suffering. How do we practice awareness? that isn't tied up in who knows more or who knows better. The who of this awareness practice that I'm going to communicate here is you. You are the only person who can know things on the level of your experience. What you feel as suffering and what you feel as peace can only be known by you. Again, I learned plenty from other people either directly or from the things that they write or make and put out into the world. But for one, it's only taken in through my senses, you know, my eyes, my ears, my touch. And two, what do you do when no one has the answers to your questions? This practice is meant to develop the most foundational level of learning. Okay, so here's the instruction. This is the general framework for mindfulness. Know what you're doing when you're doing it, and if you don't know what you're doing, know that you don't know. And then also try to be okay with not knowing or being confused. So the following three-step method that I'm going to be talking about is a kind of standard uh, practice in mindfulness and Buddhism and meditation, so it's not of my own mind. First, I'll apply it to meditation, and then I'll apply it to non-meditation activities such as having a conversation, driving, writing, or talking at a camera. I'm um, taking a lunch break right now. I had some asparagus and red peppers that were put in the oven with uh, oil, red pepper, salt, pepper, and also some sweet quince jam. I'm gonna eat more later, but the rice is still cooking. Feel free to take this next part in as a guided meditation. So, you're meditating. You've set a timer for 10 minutes. You're sitting or laying down. Your body's still and not in motion. You're relatively comfortable, yet still alert. Your eyes are closed, and you're just sitting there, breathing. Number one, know what you're doing. As you start meditating, you can verbally note to yourself, sitting or laying down. 
In very simple and uncomplicated terms, what is your body doing? Breathing, for example. If you have a thought, label it thinking. Don't get into what the thought is about, just label it thinking. Then go back to what you're doing. Sitting. Breathing. Number two, feel it. Don't try to put words to what you're feeling or describe it. Just feel and sense what is being noted. Feel sitting on your butt, in your legs. Physically, what does it feel like to sit? When you note thinking, feel thinking. If you're new to meditation, you might not physically feel thinking, but I can feel the contraction and tension in my head when I'm thinking, good or bad thoughts. Jesus. Not judging whether it's a good or bad thought, just any thought, there's a subtle sensation that happens. What does breathing feel like? Again, don't try to describe it with words what you're feeling, but just experience it, sense it with your body. Three, don't interfere, observe. Don't try to change the sensation or discomfort. If you're really uncomfortable meditating, physically or mentally, stop. But otherwise, try to stick with it. If you get an itch on your face, right, just a little feeling, try not to scratch it or touch your face. Just try to feel the sensation. Just try to feel that and feel just how annoying it can become. Instead of touching it, note itch. <laughs> feel it and then keep breathing and sitting, just taking note, not interfering. This is how we learn about discomfort and impulse. The consequences of you itching your face aren't going to be uh, someone getting hurt. But it's an opportunity to learn about discomfort and patience. It's an opportunity to learn about how you react to suffering. In the same way, as if it were an internal itch, don't try to force thoughts away. Don't punish yourself for thinking. Don't try to think more to figure it out, figure out what it means or why you thought that. Just note thinking and gently return to sitting and breathing. I am currently chewing rice. Can you hear the rain? Okay, so now non-meditation activities. Having a conversation, driving, writing, talking at a camera. And of course there are situations where you need to act but there's, you know, some social circumstances where you don't need to respond right away. You know, I'm not encouraging you to hold yourself back, but it's a chance to think more and really feel how something has affected you and not just react to it, you know, in a subconscious or way that you don't know why you're saying what you're saying. You know, maybe you have a history of saying things you don't mean. This would be something that could be really helpful in bringing awareness to speech. Do you feel like you can have awareness while you're speaking? Or are you elsewhere? You end a conversation or you end a story and you don't know what you just said. How does it feel to be saying what you're saying? Me, right now, I'm speaking, right? What am I doing? I'm talking. I'm looking at a green light on my laptop. I'm sitting. Um, how does it feel? My back is kind of uncomfortable from the way I'm sitting, I think. Um, but otherwise, I feel pretty good. I feel like I know what I'm doing. I'm making a video that's about awareness. I feel good about it. I feel pretty comfortable. I'm excited. I think a lot of actions that we do are experiments and thinking of it that way we're taking a risk and then we practice with the consequences. We practice with the feelings that happen after we make a move. We can't be mindful all the time. But if you start meditating you'll see that the memory is pretty present. 
you'll have a thought about something that you might regret and there's your opportunity to uh, learn more about those feelings. Say we're driving and suddenly we feel really uncomfortable, almost sick. Maybe there's a bodily issue going on that's making you feel sick, but otherwise maybe you really don't want to go where you're going. So you note driving, you feel it, it doesn't feel good. Maybe then you stop, right? Maybe then you stop driving. And that's not interfering with the feeling. That's actually maybe making time to feel that feeling and not continue on through it, ignoring how you feel. That could teach you something. So say you're writing or you've otherwise allotted time to just think and be with thoughts. Every sentence that you write, you can feel that sentence. If you're writing about something that's uncomfortable or makes you feel upset, Note that it makes you feel upset. I think it's very easy to spew out things, to regurgitate what has been stuck into our mind through our ears or through our eyes if we're reading. And when we speak, we have a chance to reform what we have taken in. We have the chance to really feel the implications of that message. Do you ever catch yourself doing some nervous habit? Say, biting your nails or, you know, I kind of do this sometimes, just pinching my thumb. You know, there's some kind of maybe movement in my mouth, just like my tongue against my teeth. In school, I saw a lot of people bouncing their leg. I don't want to make people feel self-conscious because there's nothing wrong with doing things impulsively, but those little movements, those are your signals. That's your body being uncomfortable. When you don't know what's wrong and you don't have someone you trust giving you a satisfying answer, that's when awareness practice can be really helpful. Again, know what you're doing, feel it physically, and don't interfere. And if you don't know what you're doing, just relax, you know, take it easy. Don't beat yourself up for not knowing something. Trust that you have some tools to better understand, to better be aware of what's happening. And you'll probably never be fully satisfied, but perhaps you'll find out more when you feel a little better when you feel more calm, when you trust yourself and your experience more. So what I've just communicated could be called provisional wisdom in the sense that it's not experiential. It only becomes experiential wisdom when you experience it, you know, when it becomes real for you and not just my words that uh, you carry in your mind. So. I hope that um, this has been informational and that you suffer less and you enjoy life more. Um, let me know if you have other methods or there were parts of this video that were confusing. Let me know whatever is on your mind now or later in relation to this video. My name is Sarah Ann, and uh, bye.